Hi, I am Paul Spooner, and this is 3D RGB text to geometry XKCD thing. Uh, I made a 3D model some years ago, and I recently uploaded it to Sketchfab, and I also have the Blender file available, so let's explore all that. So this is the color page where I got the text data. It's xkcd.com slash color slash RGB, or slash color slash RGB.txt, which is where the text data comes from. Uh, he's got 954 colors. I think I've got uh, 948 or something. So I cut some of these out, but most of them are still here. And uh, some years ago, I made this image, which was a particularly high density zone. I was looking at the 3D data and there's this plane that kind of cuts through that has a particularly high density. So uh, I, I made an image of that. Um, but I never really made the, the RGB thing available, or maybe I, you could download it, but I didn't really clean it up very much, do anything with it. So then more recently, I, uh, I made an updated version, and I put it on Sketchfab, as you can he see here. I'll put a, a link in the description to this, but uh, there's a 3D model on Sketchfab, so you can spin the 3D data around if you want, and that's all fun. You can see the whole color space, but you can't really see the names, and uh, it's not particularly useful because you can't really do much with it. None of the data, it's all amalgamated into one big block. So uh, I would really recommend if you want to grab the data and uh, and play with it yourself. It's peripheralarbor.com slash RGB importer dot blend. And that will get you something that looks like this. So here we are in the RGB importer file and it is just a whole bunch of data. Now, the first thing to notice, uh, I've got all this stuff scaled kind of weird for the visuals. And so you can kind of see inside if you're just interested in looking at the different colors and distributed through the space. But um, there's no real reason that it has to be like this. You can just hit A for select all, Alt S to unscale everything, and now everything is scaled. And then I like to scale it like the golden ratio 0.618, and that uh, that gives you some space you can kind of see in between them while maintaining the relative sizes. So these are the colors of the RGB space. So one thing to note here is um, because of physics and stuff, uh, things like violet and indigo um, are not actually inside RGB space. They're actually outside RGB space, just like really deep reds are outside, like in a, a sunset. They're actually outside the RGB space. They're off of the edges, off of the red end and the blue end of RGB space. And also some colors aren't represented well by RGB space because the cones in your eyes are not uniform between person to person. And they also don't pick up the light coming from monitors the same way that they do light coming from actual objects. The, the light coming from actual objects is usually much broader. The light coming from monitors has these very sharp peaks. And so uh, anyway, that can affect the way that you perceive color. So just note that this is about RGB color space. This isn't about like all of colors and all of the universe or whatever. Uh, and, and XKCD is about that as well. Like he makes it very clear this is about RGB color space. It's not about any other form of color. So, uh, but it can be useful to look at and uh, it does cover most of the colors that people think about when they are talking about colors. One of the things you can do with this, of course, you can look at all the colors and select them and see their name. You can see their name up here. This RGB color space, purplish blue, select that one, cornflower. You can also go over here to the search menu and search for something. So you can do like pink. And then if you select one of these, hit A to select all, shift H to unhide or to hide everything except those. These are all the pink colors, everything with the word pink in it. So you can see, I think uh, somewhere in here, is this medium pink, Barbie pink? Mm, one of these is just like pink. There it is right there. So this is conventional pink color. And um, it's right on the edge. So that means that it's, well, it might not be exactly on the edge. Let's see. Uh, no, that's fine. It's, it's on the edge enough. Uh, so you can see that it's pretty saturated, but it's also got quite a bit of blue in it. So you, um, this line here, straight from the corner over to the, the corner here, is the um, value line. So like even this right around the corner here still has some, if we 
unhide. Well, okay, so so here's here's pure red. So this is all above the diagonal line, um, except for a few of these. These are pinkish orange and orange pink. These are below the diagonal, but everything else is above the diagonal, which means it has more blue in it than green, which means it's more toward purple than it is pure red. So if pink were just light red, then all the pinks would be centered around this line here. And actually salmon pink uh, is probably the closest to what, uh, what you consider light red. It's actually, it's actually pretty much on the line there. Well, let's see, let's look at the RGB. Yeah, so it's, it's still got a little more green than blue to it. Uh, anyway, uh, unhide there. Okay, so, um, but you can look at all these different colors. You can, well, this is purple pink. This has got pinky purple, purplish pink. So you can you can play around with the the uh, the color space of pink. And then these are these are less saturated over here. So this is almost like gray, yeah, pinkish gray. And uh, then there's a very light pink up here. So you can look at the different colors that way. Uh, Alt H to unhide everything and uh, so yeah we can go over here and search for something else like uh, dusty these are very popular with the ladies uh, let's see there we go so here's all the dusty colors dusty blue dusty teal dusty green dusty purple dusty lavender dusty pink dusty rose dusty orange and dusty red and uh, so you can you can play with those you can look for particular uh, keywords or something if you're looking for a particular thing. Um, anyway, I sorted all these out into a few categories. Uh, first off, I did the metals. And those are the ones with the names up. You can hide those if you want, but I like having them there just so I can kind of navigate in the space. So we've got silver, gold, bronze, and copper. And we also have steel, metallic blue, and gunmetal. Those are all the colors that I could find that had something associated with metal to them. Um, so those are the metallic colors. There's seven of them, appropriately enough. And uh, that's kind of interesting. So then next down, you can just access these by the number keys. So this is one for all of them, two for the metals. Three, this is the high density plane that I showed you earlier. Uh, and it seems to go from near black to white, but it cuts through the orange. Uh, yep, that's actual literal orange and kind of close to the teal, but it doesn't quite hit teal. It's, it's more sky blue is the, is the plane. So it's like orange to sky blue uh, and white to black is the kind of the plane definition. And um, if you're looking at the, well, I don't know if you can see, yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but if you're looking at this this color space, you can see that there's a particularly high density of colors all in this all in this plane. And uh, so I thought that was interesting, and so that's preserved in here. There's a high density named or high named density plane, and a named density basically just means that it's a place where people are interested in drawing a sharp distinction between many close colors, cl colors that are close to each other. So like, if you look at the color down here in the corner, you can hardly tell the difference between that and this. They're a little bit darker. Or these two, like it's a tiny bit difference, but it's not much. Uh, and it's even closer with colors that are, let me see if I can find some that are really close, like these two. Uh, grayish and cement. So what's the difference between grayish and cement? Hardly anything. but there is enough difference that people called these different colors and called them, named them often enough that they uh, showed up in the in the survey. So this plane is kind of interesting to me because there's uh, this shorthand, this rule of thumb in graphic design that you want to go on the orange and teal spectrum to kind of uh, make a nice color uh, space. And it appears that this plane has a high name density, which means that there are a lot of people that are interested in the colors that lie along this plane. It's kind of interesting that that, that would be the case, that it's from orange to sky blue. And uh, you know, in all the colors in between here, there's there's a particularly high density of these named colors. So anyway, that's uh, 
that's that. Then we go to the metals. I use the metals as kind of my, my yardstick for the colors. And then I sorted them by volume. So this is volume covered by the Voronoi. Oh, I guess I should talk about the Voronoi volumes. So these are all just points. And um, the colors are, they're imported based on the position in RGB space. So the X axis is red. The Y axis axis is green. And the Z axis is blue. And then any combination of those, it's it's just a unique point inside this this 3D volume. The, this space defines the volume in which there are all the RGB colors you can have. Now, what I did was I, I ran a script in here. Let's see, Crystal House Forge, I think, is the one I ran. And it takes all the points and uh, iterates through all of them and finds the Voronoi volumes around each one and then draws a cube around it if there's no boundary on the on the edges. So that's what that did. That's how I generated those. So these are just Voronoi volumes. They're, they're volumes bounded by the nearest point. So if you see like uh, this guy here, what? Hot pink. Uh, hot pink is bounded by electric pink and strong pink. And over here, magenta. And so if you unscale all these, uh, you can see there that the volumes are totally enclosing the entire space. So there shouldn't be any volume inside this space that is not covered by one of these volumes. So if you were to take a point, any point in, in the space, you could find which volume it fit inside and that would ostensibly be the color, would be the name of the color that someone would give to the color that is represented by that position in RGB space. So that is what the, uh, the uh, Voronoi volume thing does. And uh, I just scale them down again a little bit so that we can see in between them a little better and get a sense for the volume instead of just seeing the surface of them. Although we could just look at the surface, which is over here in number eight, edge colors. These are all the ones that intersect the edge. And it's kind of interesting to see this, like there's this big gap here. So this color that lies at the intersection of all of these, uh, these volumes here, it's not particularly interesting to people. People are like, well, bright cyan, sky blue, sky blue, bright sky blue. Yeah, this is like the color of sky and people don't really give it a name because what are you gonna do? Like there's not that many things in nature that are this color and it's just this color of the sky. There are some languages in which the color of the sky is not denotated as a color, it's just clear. It's like no color, uh, almost like white where people just aren't interested in naming colors that don't have utility in day-to-day -day life. Whereas if you come over here, um, you can see all of the smallest colors. So lots and lots of, of yellows over here. Butter yellow, custard, light yellow, faded yellow, pale yellow, pastel yellow. So people are very interested in this particular area of yellow because they've named all of these colors. They've uh, associated them with some space in their, their language model. So this is kind of cool because it's like a mapping of the human language model onto the color space, which is a perception space. Uh, again, same thing up here. There's all these very light blues, light sky blue, light light blue, <laughs> light light blue, eggshell blue, very pale blue, very light blue, really light blue. So maybe this is an artifact of the way that the names were aggregated, but it's still interesting that there's all these, this cluster of, of um, colors over here. Uh, very dark blue, dark navy blue. So again, there's this distinction between, this fine distinction between these dark blue colors. Uh, deep purple, there's some beautiful greens down here, bottle green, dark green, racing green and another dark green. I guess this is one word dark green and this is two words dark green. I think maybe that was one of the things I, I started culling out before I gave up uh, was was these, these uh, insignificant distinctions between colors. So here we've got, yeah, 949 of these, uh, whereas the original is 954, I think. So I cut five of them out. It's not a lot, but something. Uh, these oranges down here, saffron, amber. So the distinction between saffron and amber, very fine distinction, but it does exist. Uh, marigold, orange, yellow, sunflower. So uh, 
This is kind of cool. These are all of the colors that are smaller than the smallest metal, which is bronze, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, bronze. And then we go to up to gold. So these are all the colors that have a, a size of volumes. This is the Voronoi volume. Uh, I wrote a little script thing to, and it's in the scripts if you want to go look at it and mess around with it. But uh, it's all the colors that have a volume, an internal volume in their Voronoi volume of between the colors, or between the colors of bronze and the colors of gold. That's what it was. So this is kind of cool, right? It's this this neat um, space. It almost looks like intergalactic space, like the uh, the firmaments in, in intergalactic space. Where there's these connected volumes here along lines, presumably between other less interesting colors. So these are all the interesting paths, approximately. And if we add in these, then we can see here, here's this, you know, you can, uh, there we go. So here's all the tiny ones. So this is the really high density stuff. And you can see that the, um, the lower density is on the edges of those. And we can add more. Uh, this is the over gold, so this is between gold and silver in volume. And then finally we get larger than metals. And there are only a few. This is interesting to me that there are, there are very few colors, uh, what is it, 18, that are less interesting than the color silver. You could think about it that way anyway. Uh, so there's indigo, the color of Barney the dinosaur, purpley pink, darkish pink. Anyway, you can look at all these colors if you want, find the colors. There's green. Green itself is not particularly interesting. It it's, covers a large volume. I think the largest volume of all is uh, purpley pink. Oh, I could be mm, could be mistaken. Maybe it's dark sky blue. Well, let's see. We'll go over here to scripting, and uh, yeah, dark sky blue is the largest, followed by purple. All right. So yeah, dark sky blue, followed by purple are the largest colors. They don't, uh, they should, yeah, yeah. They don't look quite as big because like this one's sprawled out, but it's not actually that thick. It's It's got some some thin bits that are cut off. So anyway, these are the uh, sky blue. Again, not a particularly interesting color. Purple, not a particularly interesting color. Uh, it covers a large volume. There isn't a lot of other colors that are, that are finely defined around this purple area, or maybe people can't perceive these colors very well, but I thought it interesting to note that if you add in the metals, uh, these largest colors, the least interesting, if you want to put it that way, are kind of kind of uh, forming a volume around the metals. So if we just take these out again and add them in again, you can see there's this volume in the middle here, and that is where the metals are right here, metallic blue, gunmetal, and steel and then gold. There's nothing even close to gold that has a large volume. You can see that it's just, it's like it's cut out all the space around it. So we could presume, and in fact, if you look at the space, you'll find that it's fairly true, that gold is fairly highly densely populated. Same thing with bronze, right? Bronze has a high density around it. Silver, not so much. Silver is not a very interesting color. Of course, it's gray, so maybe that's not a you don't really need a lot of names for gray but steel metallic blue uh again have quite a bit of of density around them and then there's these these connecting planes again there's some cool uh greens here but those are defined by much larger volumes around them so anyway i thought that was really cool and uh then finally we have the edge colors, which are just all the colors that are on the edges of the plane or of the of the cube. And some of these only intersect a very small amount, like I think purple. Yeah, purple just barely intersects. Um, there are a few more that are they're just barely intersecting. Yeah, macaroni and cheese, the color, one of the larger colors, I I believe, although not in the largest. And finally, we have the bad colors. So these are all of the excrementory colors. Uh, I won't say them out loud, but you can imagine. And uh, But then we also have these colors up here. So I thought this was kind of cool. So this is dirt, dirt brown and dirt. Uh, down here we've got dirty orange. 
Uh, but there's no ugly orange. There's also ugly for everything else. All the other all the other dirty colors have an ugly pair, but orange does not. So there's no ugly orange. People don't think orange is ugly, I guess. Uh, here we've got dirty pink and ugly pink right next to each other. You can kind of imagine how that would happen. We've got ugly purple and dirty purple. Again, dirty purple is closer to dirt than uh, than ugly purple, although they are far apart. They're very, very separated here. Uh, blue, dirty blue is further from dirt than ugly blue, although not by much. They're, they're kind of almost equidistant. Um, but there's your, your dirty and your ugly blue colors. There's also dirty green and uh, I believe ugly green is down here somewhere. There it is, ugly green. Uh, so again, dirty green's closer, but these are still separated by a decent distance. Uh, there's, I think, yeah, there's dirty yellow. And is ugly yellow? Yes, ugly yellow is right next to it, down here on the edge. And uh, then, of course, we have dirt brown. So I'm calling that dirty brown, but it's dirt brown. That's the pair. And then there's ugly brown <laughs> down here on the edge, uh, in between all of the other excrematory colors. So uh, that's kind of cool. So these are all the colors I could find that had some sort of mm, negative valence associated with them, let's say. And there may be more that I missed, but uh, 38 colors with a negative valence. So I thought that was kind of cool. So uh, yeah, so that's the, the color space. You can do some fun stuff with this. I've used it to figure out what is that color a few times. Um, you can... Uh, use it for exploring what kind of colors you want. If you want to create a color palette, it's usually a good idea to have colors that are somewhat separated from each other. And uh, again, this plane is a really good, is a really rich, uh, fertile area for defining a color palette because these are high density stuff. Or of course, you could draw it from these uh, these named colors, this high density small named colors. So like white is one of the smallest, I think. Uh, Let's see, what are the smallest colors? I think white is, yeah, white, butter, banana, and very light blue are are the uh, smallest ones. Although it may have to do with them being right on the edge and then like pale gray kind of crowds out white. But uh, yeah, white is the, the smallest color. One might say the most interesting color. Uh, again, you can download this for free. All the stuff I make is released to the public domain so you don't have to worry about copyright or whatever on this. I don't remember what uh, XKCD did with his IP, but I think he released all of this RGB stuff uh, for you know CC attribution or something. Um, so you don't have to worry about restrictions on all these. And I'll put the links in the description and uh, there's a Sketchfab version of this, but if you want all the color names and things, you'll have to go and download the Blender file and look at it yourself.